What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Powered by Primus and in today's video we're going to be doing a top 10 on the battle cards coming out with Wave 5. Now to be honest there could be like 17 cards in my top 10 for this so it was really tough kind of narrowing it down so this top 10 is going to be a little more of cards that I believe that you are going to see on a more regular basis that have the ability to deliver really high power without certain scenarios. Now yes I do think there are a few cards in this set that are absolutely amazing if X thing happens first, the card does become a lot better. However, if that thing doesn't happen, then that card is obviously a lot worse. So I'm going to be using a lot of cards that just are really good naturally on the surface that are going to have a lot of potential and are cards that you are going to see being played. Now coming in at number 10, we have Escape Capsule. This is an orange and a black battle icon. It is a rare utility and it also does give plus one. It also does say that when you deploy the head mode from a character, then essentially you get to move all the upgrades, including the Escape Capsule, from the body mode to the deployed character, which is going to be that head. So it's a really powerful card as far as like once your character, your body mode character gets taken down, you get to deploy this little headmaster, sorry, little Titan Master, and then you just have the character and you get to lose all the upgrades. However, with Escape Capsule, you get to carry all those over. So it can make that little character now very dangerous if you do happen to have some really cool upgrades or let's say you've got like a tough character or even a bold character and you get to bring over weapons or armors to match now that character becomes a little more deadly even at a four star because you don't really have to play those upgrades again it just comes with those character I'm sorry those upgrades naturally it also comes into play untapped so even once that body mode character does get taken down now you get to deploy that that Titan master move all those other upgrades over and then it can get in for some damage or block or do whatever it could be a ridiculously powerful card depending on how big body mode characters are going to be Coming in at number nine, we have Counter Espionage. Now this card is a really powerful and awesome card. First off, it is a black and a green battle icon card. Really good colors there. Green obviously allows us to pick it up after combat. And it does say you get to name an action, and then you get to look at your opponent's hand and face down secret actions. I think you could also do face up secret actions as well. And you get to scrap all cards of the chosen name. Now this is really good. Just imagine calling out like focus fire, making your opponent scrap all three focus fires. Or you know you're about to play a grenade launcher or a master sword and you want to try to get around a sabotage armaments and you know your opponent has a secret action, you can go sabotage armaments and you could really hope that even if it's not there, you know that you're safe from it. On top of getting all of the information from your opponent's hand, and face down secret actions. So even if you happen to miss, it's not a sabotage armament, you can see, oh cool, well it's a hidden fortification or it's a bolster, whatever the case is. And then you can kind of really start to dive down and really get into your play knowing exactly what your opponent has. Having knowledge on what your opponent has in this game, you know, in most card games is ridiculously good because you know what to play around, right? Your opponent's only drawing one card per turn unless they happen to be playing, you know, some flip effects or card effects that give them more draw. You can kind of really go around what your opponent's doing and you're like, oh, okay, well, I know that's a sabotage. Great, I got rid of it off the counter espionage, or maybe you're trying to go for something else and see that it's a sabotage. You're like, okay, cool, I just don't play a weapon this turn. Makes it really easy and really powerful, like I said, not to mention being able to scrap all of the actions from your opponent's hand that has the same exact name is really, really good rather than just hitting one of them and going, oh, I saw that he has two. You could hit two of those. Not to mention, with this being a green, like I said, we get to pick it up after combats. So I know that I've talked about it quite a bit when it came to talking about espionage. It's a really good deterrent just for your opponent to see it in their deck because then they know that you have it. You have the potential to remove something. Nothing is more fun, I would say, or more of a like mind bender is that when you're on defense, your opponent flips, you flip, combat does whatever, and then your opponent sees a green card that they want to pick up, and then they look across the table and see that you have counter espionage ready to go. So then you're just like, oh yeah, well do you want that card? And then, because they have to choose first, it's priority, and then they're like, oh well yeah, I'll grab it, and you're like, cool, I'll grab counter espionage. And then now you have the ability to play counter espionage right off the bat and get that card out of their hand, which is really, really cool. Coming at number eight, we have Tripwire. Now this card I think is re really, really interesting. It's something that I think is gonna have more of a specialty effect. However, it has a good amount built into it just itself. First off, it is a blue battle icon, it is an action, and then it does say deal one damage to an enemy. Now that's just the start of it. I think even by itself there, it just becomes a blue zap, right? I think it has a lot of potential just by being that. However, 
If you're dealing one damage to a five star enemy, then you get to tap the character down. Now it's also if it is four stars, three stars, two stars, it's really five stars or under. However, for the majority of things, we're gonna be using them on five star characters. Now I think that this is really powerful because there are a lot of five star characters that are running around right now. And this card just really allows you to essentially take away an attack sequence from, a, from an opponent. Now there are a lot of characters that are on defense that are five stars as well. Like you can do this in like the Galaxy Prime deck and you can take down or tap down a Flame War or you can go for a Skydive. Even if you're going against Superion, you can target any of those characters but it's really going to be designed for those aggro decks like the airstrike patrol and the off-road patrol that you're going to be able to get a lot of benefit from it now your opponent's going to swing already boom they have one tap down it's going to come back to your turn you play this card you tap down an opponent's other one you completely get to remove one of their sequences from attacking not to mention most of those characters have the ability to only have stealth while they are untapped so you can even play this on like Tailwind, you now tap Tailwind, and then now you can swing into Tailwind and get rid of that ability right off the bat. Now I think that this is really powerful against those decks, so maybe even this just becomes a really good sideboard card, but even if you are going and tapping down a Flame War, you still are removing sequences from your opponent, because then that forces them to attack with their other characters. If your opponent's like, okay, cool, this guy's playing really heavy orange, I'm gonna just like leave back my Flame War, you can even run this in an orange list and be like, tap that character down, swing at it, you know what I mean? So it's gonna be really, really good. And this card's gonna be tapping out a lot of characters, so it's gonna be really interesting to see kind of like what characters start to really change when it comes to in the meta. Because again, losing attack sequences is very powerful in this. Because even though in the situation where you're like, well, Flame War's gonna get in, let's just keep using her for an example. She's only gonna get in for three basic damage. I know she's not gonna push damage, but she's gonna get in there, she's gonna be able to just tap, get in for maybe one point of damage if you're going against orange, blue, even if it's zero, whatever, maybe pierce. It just allows you to use it as a sequence because then now your opponent has to go and then they have to tap one of their characters and then you can get in with your big character and kind of get to choose who you want to attack. However, you get your Flame War tapped out after your first swing. Well, now you have to go in with your big character and then you might be going into a really bad attack and then your opponent gets two or three swings into your main character. It could turn out to be some pretty insane stuff. So I would imagine you are gonna be seeing this card run around. Coming in at number seven, we have hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, first off, this has a new battle icon as far as when it comes to uh, a lot of the stuff coming out with Wave 5, where it is trait-specific battle icons. So first off, the card will always count as a blue battle icon card. So if you happen to play something that says get a blue battle icon from your scrap pile or whenever you flip a blue battle icon, get this, it always counts for that. However, you only get the blue when it comes to defending with a character if that character defending is a melee character, which I think is just awesome because it's called hand to hand combat so melee you're getting in there with your fisticuffs now i think that's really really cool as far as just the design itself however it does say when the upgrade i'm sorry when you choose a character and then when that character attacks and has no weapons equipped to it specifically that character gets plus three attack and on top of it just turning into a leap into battle you get to scrap all of the defender's weapons now it's really cool to be able to get the plus three because it really has a lot of design built into it. This is definitely one of those cards that's called like a top-down design where it just all makes sense, right? It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. You don't have a weapon. So this card requires you to not have a weapon and then you get that plus three attack. So even if it just comes down to a scenario where you're just getting plus three, it becomes a leap into battle that you get a blue battle icon if you're a melee character. So it just does that in general, which means I think it's good. However, being able to scrap the defender's weapon would have been good enough. However, it scraps all of the defender's weapons. So we're definitely starting to see that there are a lot of characters that can have multiple weapons. There's going to be more coming in with Wave 5 that have the ability to hold more weapons. And this allows you to, I would say, proactively remove weapons, whereas like a lot of cards that we see are more used for on defensive side of things, like Sabotage Armaments. Now this allows you to also like build in a Vaporize into a Leap into Battle, whereas normally you'd have to play your Vaporize for your turn and then you're like, oh man, or you'd have to play a weapon that removes another weapon such as an enforcement batons. 
However, this just does it all in one card, which makes this card absolutely amazing. Even if you're in the situation where you're an all blue deck, you're not getting in, maybe that plus three doesn't really matter, but maybe breaking your opponent's weapons do matter. Maybe you're in a fight against Master Sword and your opponent is about to draw more cards. Maybe they're top decking. Maybe you just used another card to get rid of one of their upgrades. They sacrifice something to keep that Master Sword around. Then you can now play this card and then hit it yet again. This card is really, really amazing, and I cannot wait to be playing it myself. Coming in at number seven, we have Master of Metallicado. Now, this card is a really, really interesting card since we're talking about battle icons that require specific traits. This is orange, black, and blue. I believe the orange is specialist, the black is ranged, and the blue is melee. So, pretty interesting. So, if you're attacking and you flip this card, you have to be able to get all three of those traits. You'd have to fall under those categories. So, if you want like the orange, black, you have to be specialist and ranged. If you're ranged, you get just the black and you're specialist. You get the orange, you're melee, you get the blue, yada, yada, yada. However, when it comes to playing this card, I think it has a lot of potential because it is a very interesting one. It does say that when the upgraded character attacks and you flip battle cards, uh, for each different battle icon color you flip, you get plus one attack. So it's been really interesting being able to get a lot of these upgraded characters that were allowing it to do the same thing essentially, but on an upgrade. However, weapons that didn't really have plus abilities didn't really gain you a lot. Like you're playing an upgrade, not getting a lot of damage. However, being able to play this action for the turn and potentially getting between two to five damage now changes things quite a bit. Not to mention this is a triple icon color itself. So if you are running this, then essentially you should have two others in your deck that are also three battle icons. And if you're flipping a white, like I said, you could potentially be getting up to five different, or sorry, plus five attack when it comes to attacking. That is a really, really good number when it comes to swinging. Now it is gonna require a little bit more of a deck building require a little more deck building knowledge, right? You're going to have to be able to build a deck a little bit better than the average person to make sure that when you are in those sequences, when you do play this card, you are maximizing it. Now, you might also be able to just do things like play Power Punch and then play this and then swing and then maybe that bull three, you're going to be able to get in there. So you can get in for some pretty insane damage. Now, not to mention, are you only getting, let's say, plus five from this, but you're also getting the battle icons that you flip as well, right? So if you happen to flip like one or two oranges in there, well, now you're getting plus seven. So it can be really, really good. If we look at cards such as like uh, Reckless Charge, you're able to get plus four and that was good enough to also deal three damage to yourself. That's how good that card was when you're like, oh man, I'm getting plus four. It's okay, I'm taking three. I'm getting plus four. This card, you can get up to plus five and take no damage at end of turn. So this card is just pretty insane. I think it's gonna be in a lot of aggro lists just in general. Obviously it does require you to have different color battle icons in your deck. However, we're starting to see uh, this sequencing that I talk about pretty regularly is about how battle icons aren't nearly as important as they used to be, right? Like when we used to build wave one, wave two, it was like, I'm all orange, I'm all blue. And then that was kind of like, you know, your gangland, you were on one side and you were on the other side. Whereas now it's like, oh, I'm okay with playing this one card and I, yeah, I'm losing the battle icon. However, I'm picking up this ability. This is gonna allow for those mixed battle icon decks to start to really become more powerful, especially with something like this, where you're like, oh yeah, I know I'm never gonna get the orange battle icon on, on attacking. However, I'm being able to get plus five. It makes the card worth it, even though you're losing that battle icon. And hey, maybe there's a chance that you're picking up the blue on defense, or maybe you're getting that black with the pierce. Who knows, but it's gonna make things really good. So like I said, this card is going to be very powerful. Mixed list, man, brawn. You're gonna see a lot of different characters that are gonna be playing this card. Now coming in here at number five, we have Paralyzo Box. Now this is an interesting weapon. One, I'm very excited to play because it requires a bit of a guessing game on top of that. It's a mini game inside of a game, so I'm really excited. Paralyzal Box is a white battle icon and a green battle icon at all times. However, if you're attacking and you're a ranged character, then you're able to get the green battle icon, so it's really interesting on how you're gonna be able to pick up the card, um, but it's gonna be a really good card. There's a lot of characters that are really gonna benefit from this. Just being ranged, a lot of aggro characters are more on that range side of things, and then being able to be able to get this card's ability to go off is going to be pretty nice. Now it does say that when the upgraded character attacks, you get to name a battle icon color. Your opponent reveals the top card of their deck. If it's the chosen color, you get plus four attack. So, oh, pretty insane. You get grenade launcher damage 
on this upgrade that gets to stick around. That's really gonna be kind of your debate with this card is that is it just better naturally in a lot of situations? Now obviously this is a white battle icon card versus an orange which is really nice because now this can be put into any list and you're kind of in a beneficial spot, right? If you're looking in an aggro deck, it's a really nice white battle icon that gives you a weapon as well. So you're not having a sacrifice going, oh man, well I need at least you know six to seven whites in the deck. Well now this is just a weapon on top of that and you're like, ooh, gimme, 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 right? But it can also count as that green battle icon. So if you are in the boat of Airstrike Patrol, this card is fantastic for those characters, being able to get the damage, being able to get the green battle icon, get two more damage on top of that. Really, really good stuff. But it does obviously require you to be able to name the top color of the deck. However, if you don't get it, well, now it's just really weird, right? If you don't get it, then it does nothing. You don't get any plus. It's just a weapon. You played an upgrade for the turn that does nothing until your next turn. So that can be a little bit bad. However, there's lots of characters that are going to benefit from this, plus not to mention if your opponent is on that same boat where they're running an orange or a blue, or even if they're heavier orange or heavier blue, and you're like, oh, I've seen like their deck and maybe it's like 70% blue, I have a 70% chance of being able to call the right color. You look through the scrap pile, go, oh, okay, I see what's here. Oh, look, I know that he still has four oranges left in his deck and he has five cards left. Let me call orange, you know what I mean? Like you have to do a little bit of mind games when it comes to that kind of stuff. However, like Box Soundwave, I think is gonna really love this card because you get to obviously put cards on top of your opponent's deck when you get to deploy a character and then you know what color's on top. So that's kind of a cool little thing. Maybe gonna be enough to maybe push that box sound wave up a little bit. I don't know, but I know that I sure am going to try with this car. Again, I think it's just a really reliable plus four attack when it comes to an upgrade. I think you're gonna be able to more often than not be able to get this ability to go off, especially if you are playing correctly. You're doing a lot of those steps that I talked about. Now, if you're playing against a you know four or five color battle icon deck, good luck. Maybe just sideboard this card going into game two. Now coming in with number four is going to be Supporting Fire. Now this card, as soon as I saw it, was instantly happy. I'm gonna be putting it into my Barricade Cars deck. It is ridiculously good. Even with some testing, it shows that it is pretty insane. Now this is a blank battle icon first with good reason. It does say that choose a character, it gets plus one attack until end of turn and can attack untapped characters as though they were tapped. I was trying to think about how the wording exactly goes. Essentially, you get Legendary Bumblebee's ability, which is a super rare, on a battle card. Like, if you ever play with Razor Claw, you ever play with Bumblebee, that ability is pretty insane. It's one of the reasons why those characters got a lot of play when they did. Like, Razor Claw was even getting play in aggro decks that weren't specifically Predaking just to be able to get that ability, right? That, uh, Legendary Bumblebee was a really big character there for a while in the cars decks because it was so able to just take advantage of being able to attack untapped characters. Your opponent's like, okay, well, let me feed you this little character because I just don't have anything else or I'm just in a really bad spot. I want to protect this character. And then you were like, oh, well, flip Bumblebee, attack that character anyway. It's really strong ability. It can do a lot of damage out of nowhere. And normally with Legendary Bumblebee, right, you knew that that character had to flip. So it was like, okay, cool, he's out. Or even Razor Claw, you're like, he's out. This is what my opponent can do. You can play around it. Supporting Fire is a battle card and it can be put into any deck. So it can come out at any point and you just not be ready for it. You're like, okay, well, let me feed Flame War. We'll just keep pouring Flame War into everything. Uh, let me feed my Flame War. I think this is in a good spot. I'm okay. Even after a reset, it can get even more deadly because you're like, oh man, this character's about to go down. Whew, here's this Flame War. And your opponent's like, well, supporting fire, swing. So you get to swing into that character. Like I said, this is just an action and it also gives plus one. It's not even just the added fact that you get to just go into an untapped character. You also get plus attack damage, which is what you're trying to do anyway. And then you play like a grenade launcher, a power punch, an energon axe, you know, master sword, whatever upgrade you're going for for the turn. You can get a lot of damage and then to be able to go into untapped characters. Now you can even be using this as something like on a character that just has built in Pierce 3. It doesn't have to be a massive 15 hit damage that you're going into your opponent and just no, but you can go in with like a Pierce character and guarantee Pierce damage. Let's say you're running a smaller, wider team with all Pierce. You just go, okay, cool, supporting fire, attack that character for Pierce, Pierce 4, because I know when that character attacks, I have another character that's just going to be able to finish it off. It's insane. So I think this card is really good. It's going to be in a lot of aggro decks. I think it's going to be a lot of Pierce decks. This thing just has the potential to be in a lot of decks in general because it just really gets to take advantage of sequencing, which is fantastic. Sometimes you're like, man, I have this character. I have this, you know, or like even you're in the situation where you're like, 
dude, I have this really big character and I have to go into this little dude, like, that super sucks. I'm about to just, like, waste my swing. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, nah, I was just kidding. I'm going to go over here and bash that guy. Like, it's super good. And I think you guys are going to see this card quite a bit. Now, coming in at number three is going to be Spy Master's Ruse. Now, I originally didn't think that this card was even going to be on my list when I first saw it. I was like, oh, I think that's pretty cool. But after really playtesting with it and really just talking to a lot of people about this card, I think that the card is really good. Now, I think the card is really good because of a very specific reason. So hold on just a second. But first off, talking about the card, it is a double black battle icon. However, one of the black battle icons is a specialist icon. So if you want both black battle icons, when you do attack, you have to be a specialist. And then it is also a green battle icon, which I think puts this card up like four or five more levels just naturally. Now, what this card says is you get to play it. And when you do, it allows you to play a secret action. Bam, you get to slap a secret action down. Now, for as long as Spy Master's Ruse is face up and that secret action is face down, that secret action does not get scrapped at end of turn. So it essentially makes your secret action last forever. As far as I know, the only current card to be able to get rid of your secret action is going to be Counter Espionage. So as long as your opponent isn't running Counter Espionage and happens to name the correct card, that secret action gets to sit there forever. Like, forever. Which is really, really awesome and why it made it onto the list. Now, if any of you guys have ever played Magic or a few other games that have this kind of mechanic where they have counter spells, essentially, you'll understand why I think this card is really strong. Now, right now, secret actions, I think, are good, right? There's all those situations, but you have to be a little more meticulous about when you play them. You're like, okay, I'm holding hidden fortifications and I'm holding sabotage armaments. What do I do to my opponent? Does he have an upgrade? Is he about to hit me with a big weapon? Is he not? Is the tough three more relevant? You have to play this mind game with yourself and then go, okay, I think this is the best option and then put that secret action down and pray you made the correct decision or pray that your opponent doesn't play around what you were playing and then just things get really weird, right? Nothing is worse than like you playing sabotage armaments and then your opponent going, okay, cool, well, I'll just play supercharge versus my power punch and then you're like, oh. It's very interesting the way that that goes down. However, with Spy Master's Ruse, you get to play the secret action face down and it gets to stay there. So even if you play that, you know, sabotage armaments in that situation, your opponent goes, oh man, whew, I think that's sabotage. Let me play around it. Let me play the supercharge. You're like, okay, cool. You're in the same situation. However, that sabotage armaments gets to stay. It gets to stay till next turn. And then your opponent has to go, oh man, it is that still a sabotage armaments? Did I play it right last turn? He didn't do anything about it last turn. Oh, do I play a weapon here? And now your opponent has to play around it. It is permanently going to be there, safe for you to eventually use when you need to in a very, very good situation. You're like, oh man, I'm about to go down. And your opponent's like, ah ha ha, big weapon. And then you're like, oh ha ha, sabotage armaments. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> you get to use it. Even in the situation where your opponent's trying to bait out something, they're like, I'm going to play this weapon. And you're like, okay. And then they're like, I'm going to attack. And you're like, okay. And you don't use it. Well, now they're like, oh, is that a sabotage? Is it not a sabotage? And that mind game gets to go up and up and up, turn after turn until your opponent's like, finally, like, you know what? I don't think it's this. Slaps down. And then you're like, Gotcha. You know what I mean? It, you really get to condition your opponent with this, which I think is really powerful. Something like I talked about in Magic is that you have counter spells, right? You get to use these cards whenever you want. They're instants, they're sorceries. Well, I guess an instant, you can't use a sorcery, whatever, but they're instants. It's something like, you know, just have a counter spell. That's all the card says, it's counter spell, right? And your opponent has to always play around if they know it's there. And they go, oh man, is this something that I want them to counter? Is this something I want them to stop? They have to play around it at all times. Well, in this game, we've never had that ability before. You only have the secret action for a turn, and then it's gone. So your opponent only has to really play around it for one turn. Now, they don't. Like I said, it's permanent. Even if you're playing something like the Jam Signals or Overrule or Infiltrate, you can play Spy Masters, play one of those down, and then you can counter anything that you want whenever you want, as long as it obviously matches the battle icon color. But if you're a blue deck and you're going against an orange deck and you play an Infiltrate, you have the potential to put that down whenever you want. You don't have to go, oh, well, I have to because it's just going to go anyway. And your opponent's like, oh, okay, well, all confidence. And you're like, well, it's here, so might as well. You know what I mean? You can just sit there and wait and wait and wait. And I think that's really, really cool. Now, I will tell you guys, I would like to say that I have a lot of sauce. I do have a couple things I will show you guys when it comes to like this card specifically. But I know one character that's going to love this card to death is Major Shockwave. Major Shockwave can play secret actions off the top of the deck. He's also a specialist. 
So now we're getting the black battle icons for when we need them, if we really need them, right? We're swinging for like a base of seven, so is the two pierce really relevant? Might be, you never know. But being able to play that down, play a secret action, well, now we're in a really, really good spot, right? Something like Major Shockwave is going to really benefit from it. There's obviously a lot of other characters that are really awesome that you can use with it. Like I said, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have thought about it already. There's a bunch of stuff that probably people seen about it. Night Tracer is a really good one. Uh, you want to make Night Tracer as good as Flame War in the same situation as like permanent tough one. Well, Spy Master's Roost secret action, never activate the secret action, and you always have tough one because she just says so. You could also flip it, do the same thing, and have it be orange and just always have both one. So that's pretty cool. It's one like, you know, little step up from Flame War. But even with like something like Flame War, she's a specialist. You might be able to get those old black battle icons. It might be really, really good. However, like I said, this card, you're going to see being played in decks that have secret actions. Like I said, I don't know how relevant it's going to be as far as like having three out, but it's going to be really nice in those situations when you want to have one down and it's just a constant threat for an opponent. Now, coming in at number two is actually two cards. I really couldn't separate them because of reasons, but it's going to be Master Sword and Ghost Armor. Now, Ghost Shield? Yeah, Ghost Shield. Now, the reason why these two are both sharing the same space is that they both essentially are doing the exact same thing, but obviously on polar ends where we're going to have weapon versus armor. Now, if I had to choose, I would honestly say Ghost Armor. And the reason why I would say Ghost Armor is because I think it is... I don't want to say more playable. I think it is going to be easier to play. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Now, Master Sword, first off, is a blue battle icon. It is a weapon. It does say that you can only play this weapon to replace a weapon on a character. Um, I think that's how it's worded. And then you get plus four. And then if your opponent would go to scrap the weapon, instead you can scrap a weapon from your hand, and protect it so really really good stuff now the one thing that you do have to be careful about is making sure that your opponent that your character that you're putting it on doesn't have more than one weapon slot so it can get really weird so i know that originally i talked about this card like on predaking and there's a way that you can get them onto predaking early however late game it's really tough because predaking has five weapon slots or if your character has two weapon slots three weapon slots with like living weapon um you have to have all of your weapon slots filled before you can then replace weapons it's how the system works right you can't just go oh well, I know he's got, you know, three weapon slots, but I'm going to replace this weapon with the ma Master Sword. You can't do that because you have to fill them all first, and then it, it needs to replace another weapon. So you have to have all of your slots filled. A little bit of a long way to explain that, but that's essentially how you have to do it. So most of the times, obviously, a character is going to have one weapon slot. So I think it's going to be easy to be able to replace a weapon with Master Sword. However, most of the weapons that people are playing that are relevant enough usually go away to end of turn or don't get to stick around, right? There's a lot of weapon removal in the game because weapons are so powerful powerful, right? You got grenade launcher, power punches, but even if you end up going into blues, we have energon axes, crude clubs, stuff like that, that are really powerful, but usually, like I said, don't really get to stick around. So what you have to do is try to figure out a way to sneak it more into play, or just hope that your opponent doesn't respond to your weapon. One thing that's really nice and a little secret is going to be enforcement batons. A lot of people are going to play enforcement batons to just get remove, uh, you know, an enemy weapon well now that enforcement batons is actually very scary because it is on a character and master sword can replace it so you get this added benefit either your opponent removes enforcement batons which now you can shuffle back into your deck at some point and get again to then remove another opponent's weapon or they go i've got to leave it and pray and then you're like boom master sword now it's going to get shuffled again anyway and you got an even better weapon. So I think you're going to have to do something like that a little bit to get in there. Just because, like I said, there's things like sabotage armaments. There's a lot of weapon removal out there that is going to make it harder to play. Now, the same thing goes for ghost armor as well. Now, that is an orange battle icon card. And it does have to do all the same things, right? You have to replace a shield, or I'm sorry, an armor from one of your characters. And that it is plus three defense just across the board, and then whenever an opponent would go to scrap it, instead you can scrap an armor from your hand to prevent that. So the exact same scenario. However, I think armor tends to, I guess it doesn't tend to stick around easier. However, I think that there are more armors that are useless in the game that a lot of people end up having in their hand. And this is going to be really nice to be able to play. Something like Bashing Shield, I think is another really good scenario, just like the Enforcement Batons, is 
even the bashing shield, I think, can be really decent to put down. Your opponent's like, oh, well, it's one. Maybe it's not relevant enough, especially since they don't want to, like, shuffle it back in their deck. And then usually if you're running bashing shield, you're going into another opponent that runs a bunch of armors as well, right? So they're less likely to try to remove it. It's not as juicy of a target, I'd say. There's also things like improvised shield where you're like, oh, well, this is double orange. Maybe you're going for, like, an orange armor build. Who knows? But there is going to be quite a bit of fun things that we're going to be able to do with these cards. I think a lot of them are going to be sneaked into play, whether it's with a metal detector or like another character's ability. Brainstorm's a good one coming in with Wave 5, Dreadwing. You know, there are a lot of characters that are going to have a lot of fun with these two upgrades. I think that they are going to be very relevant upgrades. I think you're going to see them quite a bit and it is going to be very difficult to take them off the table, especially again, if your deck is built correctly. Nothing is cooler than like you holding one of these weapons one of your characters and then your opponent's like oh we'll go to hit this and you're like oh well i'll just you know scrap this handheld blaster because it's a blue weapon might as well whatever you know scrap it and then you're like oh well now his double blues back in his deck like that's really good same thing with enforcement towns and bashing shields well now we're able to pick them up not only are we holding them to be able to remove our opponent's upgrades but we're also ready to use them as fodder for these weapons as well which is really really insane And then finally coming in at number one, we're going to pause here. I want you guys to go down to the comment section below and let me know what you guys think my number one is going to be. And then you guys can come back up and finish watching this. So pause it like this and go comment down below. Now, coming in at number one is going to be belligerence. Now, this may be a surprise to some people. It may not be a surprise to other people. However, I think this card has so much versatility and I think is just a really, really good really powerful card. Now this is also really just good in almost anything though, right? Like that's what makes it so powerful. First off, now the way it's worded is, is in, first off, it's an orange battle icon card. And then it does say until end of, com uh, end of turn, all blues flipped become oranges. Now, the fact that this card is an orange battle icon is actually very relevant as well, because you can even play this in an orange deck and really not care. So like if it were blue battle icon, I think it would make things a little bit different. However, it's more for either orange or blue decks. It really is just a powerhouse going up against a blue deck. Even if you're going up against a heavier orange deck that does splash a little bit of blue, it still might be relevant enough. However, if I'm a blue battle icon deck, I'm just running tons of blue. It's totally fine. I play belligerence. I get to attack. Now all of my blue battle icons I flip become oranges for the turn. So now something like, uh, you know, wh whatever the case is for getting in for damage, let's say we're attacking with Battlefield Legend, whatever, we get to play all those cards for free. We're getting in for those points of damage. Now, when it comes to also talking about being able to tricksy some of these cards, we're going to have a lot of fun with a couple of characters um, that really get to benefit from kind of an inverted effect, but via actions, oh, I'm super, super excited. But we're getting in for a character that's got base 8, base 7, base 6, whatever. We even happen to have something like a handheld blaster in our hand. Normally that card's kind of useless. Sitting in our hand, we usually want to scrap it to, you know, green battle icons, get it out of our hand as best as possible. However, we can play that, and now the bold one becomes a bold one orange because we're going to be flipping blues, right? Our deck is blue. So it's really, really good. We're getting in there now and we're changing the math on the sequencing. So now we're getting like, let's say plus three, plus five, whatever. Maybe you're in the situation where you have some type of like weird bold effect where you're like running um, even something like Metroplex, right? Where you're running a bunch of bold, usually you're running a mixed deck. This might even be good enough in there. You're flipping more cards. You're getting just potentially more damage, right? It also doesn't turn your oranges into blues. It just turns your blues into oranges. So all your oranges stay oranges. So you just get more damage. So really, really powerful in those mixed lists where you're trying to push a bunch of bold. I know that like I've run a couple of lists that are really kind of specific about that. And then sometimes you flip a bunch of blues and you're like, ah, it kind of sucks. We're good now. We just get to play this. We're good. Let's swing for a bunch of damage. Now, the same thing goes for an orange deck that's running it. Well, let's say potentially you have two or three blues in your deck. Like, let's say if you're even running cars, right? You have start your engines. Maybe there's a couple other blues that are going to be put in there from wave five. You get to play this. Well, it turns those blues into possible oranges. But that's not really that much of a benefit when it comes to swinging. Maybe, right, plus one, plus two. You have plenty of tons of actions that do more than that. You might as well just do those. However, this super hurts blue decks on defense because it turns all of their blues on defense to oranges, which is where this card becomes absolutely insert. This is magic. 
Now, only in blue decks, just being able to gain a plus a, mu a bunch of damage is really nice, but now your opponent's defense becomes zero. Now, it's based on, obviously, what their base armor is, so if they have, like, three armor, they still have three. It doesn't matter. However, every blue they flip is just an orange and doesn't count for them, which is absolutely insane. Just so you imagine your opponent having, like, built-in, you know, tough three, like, they have flintlock on, and then they've got, like, extra padding, your opponent's got, like, tough six, and they have a secret action down, and it's hidden fortification, and you're like, cool, belligerence. Your opponent has to then flip, what, 11 cards, and none of them are going to matter. Like I said, again, it doesn't turn orange to blue, so if they happen to have, like, a random orange in there, and they're like, oh, that counts as what? Nope, nothing. It is all going to be orange battle icons, and your opponent is going to take massive massive amounts of damage now whether you're blue versus blue this card is awesome and beneficial if you're orange versus blue this card is super beneficial so it's a really really good powerful card that has just so much versatility and you are going to be seeing this thing played a lot if it doesn't make it into a sideboard for whatever reason it will 100% be a sideboarded card. Now, like I said, I would imagine it's gonna be a main board, maybe a two of in most situations, and then your opponent's like, oh, well, I'm playing against an orange deck, this card just becomes bad, you just sideboard that card out. However, if you're playing against anything blue, that card just becomes insanely amazing. So it's really gonna come down to metas, right? If you're an all orange meta, no matter where you go and how you play, it's always orange, 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 well, then obviously don't run this card. However, if you're going and you're playing somewhere like here, where it's really like skewed more towards blue, you're going to be using this card like crazy. Now, I really hope that you guys did enjoy my breakdown of the top 10 for battle cards, but is there a battle card that I didn't say in my top 10 that's in your top 10? Well, if there is, make sure you guys go down in the comment section below and let me know what cards should have made it into my top 10 that are in yours, or even if you disagree with something in my top 10, let me know as well. Go down in the comment section. I'd love to chat with you guys about all of your choices. I really hope you guys did enjoy this. Obviously, if you did, I'd like to be greatly appreciated. I put a little bit of more editing into this one, and then obviously, if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys can get access to all of our fantastic content as soon as it becomes available. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next one.